Electrochemistry is a source of many points in the physical science section of the MCAT. One particular topic of electrochemistry that receives a lot of attention on test day are the electrochemical cells. Now there are three different types of electrochemical cells, including galvanic cells, which are also known as voltaic cells. These are your regular batteries, electrolytic cells, and finally concentration cells. Now we want to focus on concentration cells. They actually have biological significance. For example, the inner workings of the mitochondria function essentially as a concentration cell involving proton concentration gradients. A concentration cell is unique in that the motivating force, or EMF, the electromotive force, for the cell, for the movement of electrons, is not the difference in reduction potential between chemically distinct electrodes. In fact, in a concentration cell, the electrodes themselves are identical. The difference in a concentration cell is a concentration gradient. Now we have on the board a model of a concentration cell involving copper ions. On the right side we have a copper electrode immersed in a low concentration solution of copper ions. On the left side we have a copper electrode immersed in a solution of copper ions and the concentration of copper ions on the left side is high. Between the two half cells we have a concentration gradient of copper ions. This concentration gradient provides the motivation, or the EMF, in other words the voltage, for the spontaneous movement of the electrons. Now since we are talking about the movement of electrons, we need to remind ourselves that current is defined by convention as the movement of positive charge. So we need to be very careful in identifying the direction in which the charge will actually move, that is, the electrons will actually move, in relation to the concentration gradient itself. So let's look at our diagram. On the left side, we have a high concentration of copper ions. On the right side, we have a low concentration of copper ions. The electrons will move in whichever direction allows for those concentrations of the cations to become equal over time. So since we have low concentration of copper ions on the right side, if we were to increase or add copper ions to that solution, the concentration would rise. If we were to decrease or take away copper ions from the left side, the concentration on the left side would decrease and eventually the two concentrations would become equal. So the movement of the electrons is from the right half cell to the left half cell. Since electrons are being lost from the right side, oxidation is taking place. By definition, the electrode in, at which oxidation is taking place is known as the anode. Therefore, in the right half cell we have oxidation and we have a copper anode. In the left compartment, where the electrons are moving toward, we have reduction taking place. By definition, the electrode at which reduction takes place is the cathode. So in this concentration cell, even though both electrodes are chemically identical, they are both elemental copper, the one on the right is acting as the anode and the one on the left is acting as the cathode. This reaction will take place and the movement of electrons will occur until the concentrations of the copper ions in the solution become equal over time. Now one thing to point out is that the standard EMF of a concentration cell by definition is zero because one of the conditions of standard conditions is one molar concentrations of all reactants. So since all reactants are at one molar concentrations, they are by definition equal to each other and therefore a concentration cell will register a standard EMF of zero. A concentration cell will only register a non-zero EMF, and in fact it will be positive EMF, since it is a spontaneous movement of electrons, only when there is a concentration gradient. Given the fact that the concentration cell has a positive EMF, this necessarily means that the delta G for the redox reaction that's taking place is negative. This means that the redox reaction itself is spontaneous. So concentration cells are similar to galvanic cells in that they house a spontaneous redox reaction that transfers electrons 
in such a way that energy can be delivered to any device that is utilizing this electrical potential energy.